What's up, degenerates? I'm back, finally. School's been kicking my ass, but I got some stuff here for you, so we're gonna do some much needed things to the Jigzer. And first of which, just wanted to show you guys this. This thing, I've been trying to get one of these forever. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait to use it. AIM Solo 2 lap timer. It's not the one that like plugs into your ECU and records like lean angle and stuff, but it's just as good. It tells you your lap times every time and these lights light up uh, red if you're going slower than the last lap or green if you're going faster. So it's it's really good for fine tuning those uh, certain corners. But uh, for today slash tonight, School's been like eating me alive, so I don't have too much time tonight, but we're gonna get into a bunch of other stuff this video, so stay tuned, obviously. But for tonight, bare minimum, we're gonna get this installed, and I'm gonna go a little bit of a weird route for mounting it. Um, there's several mounting options, but uh, none of them work for me because of, well, as you see here, my steering stabilizer is in the way of my triple tree, so I can't use a triple tree mount unless I custom make it. Not doing that. And then there's another option, there's a fork mount option. But uh, the problem with the fork mount option is, as you can see, I have, this is tapered at the end on my forks and I have zero room to uh, put the little mounting, it's like a mounting circular thing, mounts right here and the bracket itself comes here. Now that would be ideal, but I would have to put it underneath the triple tree and then move my, um, my clip-ons, which are these. I don't want to do all that, man. That's too much. <laughs> and uh, with these jigsers, I read I read this online. I have no idea if it's true, and I'm not fast enough to like really tell a difference. But the lower that you can mount these forks, the better the uh, geometry is on these things. Uh, again, I mean, obviously, there's no way for me to verify that, but that's what I've been reading online in the forums and stuff. So, yeah, I can't really do the fork mount option. So the next best thing to do um in my opinion is this little guy right here and all it is is a 3d printed bracket i literally got it off pinterest i was just googling around trying to find some sort of mounting option and uh i found that and i think that would work perfect because i have a gopro mount right here so i think that if i use a couple of these little mounting arms to kind of move it up a little bit obviously staying out of the way of this but I would like it to face up and be maybe like right here. That way um, I'm not having to crane my neck too hard to look at my times as I'm, you know, gapping fools down the front straight. So, you know, let's get to it. All right, so what comes in the box, you obviously get the lap timer, you get the uh, some mounting plate thing, probably a universal mount system, or actually I think this is just what bolts to this and then allows you to mount it to like the fork mount and stuff. And then I'm not sure what this is. To be honest with you, I think this is so you can wire it to the bike so that when the bike's running, the unit is charging, but I'm not gonna use this. I'm just gonna charge the dang thing when I'm not using it. And that's what this is for, just a little trickle charger. So, all right, so now that we got this opened up, uh, this is just the stuff that came in that little baggie. Um, obviously, this piece did not come with any instructions. I'm sure it's simple enough, but if you guys are looking to get the same thing, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that, but it says Salmon Engineering. I'm sure if you look that up on Pinterest, you'll find it if you're interested in doing what I did here. But uh, I'm actually going to put you guys in a time-lapse mode because I have no idea what I'm doing and I have no interest in looking totally stupid on the internet. So I'm just going to time-lapse you guys while I kind of figure this out. <laughs> So that didn't take any time at all. That was literally about two seconds. But as you can see, the provided hardware that comes in that little baggie for the lap timer was perfect. So this fits great. And it's uh, it's actually recessed over here so that it doesn't interfere once it uh, magnetically attaches to the lap timer, which I thought was really cool. So yeah, and then all this is is just a little GoPro mount. And uh, yeah, it, I think it's gonna work. So I'm happy. I think this thing was like 10, 20 bucks or something like that. So. If you guys are looking for a little bit of an easier way to mount a lap timer to your track bike or, I mean, even a street bike, there you go. All 
All right, guys, well, here it is mounted. It's a little bit loose, but obviously I did tighten it, but that's how it goes into the uh, normal camera base mount. Let's see if I have any. Uh, all it is is this clip slid into a mount that is 3M'd to that, this plastic uh, gas tank cover. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's probably not going anywhere. <laughs> I mean, obviously I'll probably end up safety wiring it or something just to make sure, but at the end of the day, I'd rather lose this to a crash or a low side than my thousand dollar iPhone. So that's the reason people buy these things for a pretty good lap timer. But let me hop up on this thing. Oh, man, it's pretty high up on the rear stand. But yeah, it's pretty good. Just leaning and leaned over. I can definitely glance down at it. See how it is full tuck. Alright. Yeah, I won't be able to see it at full tuck. But you know, it's better than nothing because I've been relying on people to time my laps and you know I mean not that it's inaccurate or anything, but I don't want to have to ask people to time me. I'd rather just be timed for every lap and then you also get a lot more results too. Um asking your buddies to time you they're really only going to do it a couple times and they're gonna be like no <laughs> so don't blame them at all but there it is and if you guys are wondering what it looked like powered on i wonder if this thing has any battery in it yeah oh that thing is so sick but yeah so all you do you literally just turn it on and this thing's preloaded with all the tracks in america pretty much worldwide actually i think and uh yeah, that battery is pretty much dead, so I gotta charge this thing. But very cool. Uh, the GPS is super accurate on these. Um, let me turn it off before it dies. Cool. And I think I'm gonna leave that little screen protector on there. But cool, mission accomplished. Um, I tried to put a few more arms on it to kind of push the mount or the lap timer this way a little bit. So it'd be even a better view. But I miscalculated and I only have two of these guys and uh, that's not enough. I would need a third one. So I don't know if I'm even gonna do that. We'll see. Maybe I'll uh, put a 3M mount on the windshield or something. I don't know, we'll figure it out eventually. But for now, I'm just happy even having a lap timer for uh, the next track weekend. All right guys, so next up, the next thing that I actually need for this bike that I just never got around to doing is a brake lever guard. Uh, these are super important when you actually start racing. Uh, most organizations require you to have this if you're actually going to race in any group. Novice usually is where it starts out. So yes, this is a Bonamici one. They're very well made. Um, CNC machine aluminum. It's not reversible, but that's fine. You only need the clutch side. You don't need both sides. And it's got this simple uh, expander that goes inside the bar. And these are 7 8 clip-ons. So this should be absolutely perfect and it's going to go in on this side. So I believe these are Vortex racing clip-ons. So I just got to unscrew this plastic cap at the end. All right, man, the thing was low key kind of a pain in the ass to get out, but here it is. It's just a little plastic cap. It's not glued in there or anything, but it's a very tight squeeze. And uh, sorry, you can't see that. All I can say is get you some pipe pliers. I use these ones, my cheap Craftsman ones, and you just gonna kind of play with it. I just twisted it a bunch and then slowly started working it and it came out. All right, so included in this kit, uh, from Bonamici is these little spacers, which is perfect because I actually need two of them. I just uh, went in here or here and measured it out. So if you're like me and you have like a motion pro throttle, your grip is going to ever so slightly stick out further than the, uh, the seven eighths bar end. So that's what those spacers are for. So your throttle doesn't stick to the side of the uh, clutch guard. So I got my spacers figured out and I was warned by about this by uh, my parts guy, but Essentially what's going to happen is when you slide these in sometimes these are difficult to even get inside the bar because these are like very close to the inner diameter of the clip-ons and I just ran into that issue. So the way that you need to fix that is with a circular file 
I think these are the only files I have, so this might take me a minute. But all I'm going to do is file down the inside of that bar with this curved one. I think it's this one right here. Yeah. And I'm going to try to widen that hole just a little bit so I can squeeze that uh, clutch brake, brake lever guard in there. First try. All right, fellas. Well, it's installed. Oh man, that piece is beautiful. This was kind of the last thing, I guess this in the lap timer, this was kind of the last thing this bike really needed before it was gonna to be totally legal for actual racing. But this thing is gorgeous. It's not going anywhere. Throttle still moves freely. Yeah, that was about the perfect, I probably could have gotten away with just that bare minimum spacer, but I don't mind it. Definitely not pulling it back out again. <laughs> but yeah, very clean, very clean. Now, I just realized this, but this is kind of going to get in the way of my Canyon Dancers. I actually have two sets of these, but I just bought another set for this bike, and I haven't talked about that bike yet, but we'll get there. Um... Canyon dancers go over the handle and just allow you to easily ratchet strap the uh, bike down to a trailer. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how, I'm not sure if those are really going to be an option anymore for this bike, which is fine. Um, I can always do other options or just get regular tie down straps for the forks, but that is kind of annoying because I love Canyon dancers. They make, they make using a trailer just so much easier and convenient and Strapping stuff down is always a lot faster. So the last little thing I had to do for this bike um, was an oil change and filter change, but to be honest with you, there's really no reason to doing that now. Um, I think I might as well wait at least maybe another month. Um, yeah, next, next, ugh, can't talk, sorry, man. Uh, next track weekend's in May for me, so there's really no reason to change the oil now because it's just gonna sit in the bike. Uh, oil's got what do they say? They say to like change it every six months if you're not riding the bike, but uh, the oil in this bike currently has one track weekend on it. So I think I'm just going to leave it in there for now and just have the uh, 300 V. That's what I run in this thing. Um, just kind of sitting there until probably about a month or two before May. So probably March, April time frame. We'll uh, really quickly swap the oil and re-safety wire everything. So I'll take you guys through that. But yeah, that's it for this bike, guys. Um, it's pretty much ready to go. After bike week, uh, I live in Daytona, so bike week is coming up early March. Sometime after bike week, I'll be taking this thing over to Eric, um, my parts guy. He's got a shop around here. He also has a dyno. Um, now that I've gotten these things done, the last thing this bike really needs is a fresh tune. Uh, the tune that's on it, I believe, is a base map, uh, but it does have a power commander. I actually don't even know which one because it's been a while since I've looked under the, uh, last time I looked under the uh, seat was when I painted it. So it's been months, but it's got a power commander, but it has a base tune. So it's running way too rich. Uh, I probably get it making a little more power if we lean it out a little more because right now it just dumps fuel. Like you can actually tell thing <laughs> like just dumps fuel out the exhaust so we gotta fix that um there's also a random check engine light that comes on um that i want to find out what's causing um i thought it was the servo in the exhaust because this thing has a full system so stock exhaust has a servo in there that opens and closes a flap and if you disconnect it you get a check engine light but the thing is, is i installed a servo buddy on this bike back when i was painting it so that check engine light shouldn't be coming anymore so I'm hoping it's not something else and it's just that and it needs to be um, cleared out from the ECU because I also never unplug the battery like an idiot. So the other thing is, is I can't get the check engine light to come on. I can't get the check engine light to come on unless um, the bike's being run really hard. So the check engine light literally only comes on at the track and it scares the shit out of me every time. But once I bring the bike back here and I 
ride it around because I can't take this thing on the road, obviously. I'm not trying to get arrested. Um, I try to get the light to come back so I can really quickly do my ghetto dealer mod and read the actual code and the light just won't come back. So it's pretty annoying. I think it'll pop up on the dyno though. So fingers crossed for that. But yeah, dyno tune coming in a couple weeks. So that'll be fun. But yeah, man, this thing is ready. And last thing before I end off this video, I got a new spare wheel for the trailer because I didn't have one. Or I did have one, but it was dented. Like the wheel was screwed. It was like something hit it. But anyways, I have a brand new spare wheel. And then these are old. However, I got the actual wheels rebalanced. So that needed to happen. So this trailer, I actually have everything for it ready to go. So that'll probably be a next video thing. Um, I got new wiring, new lights. I also got it registered. So I have a plate for it sitting over there. And yeah, once we get this thing cleaned up, new lights, the wheels thrown back on, um, I'm going to take it to the car wash and pressure wash it because it's pretty dirty. And yeah, the only thing I couldn't get were these caster wheels. As you can see, these are pretty, pretty shot, but Kendon doesn't have any right now. Um, I was emailing with him back and forth. I think March is the next time they'll be back on the website. So next month I'll be looking to order those, but I have literally everything else. Got a wiring kit. I've got the center caster wheel, which is, it's like those small caster wheels on this side, but it's on the other side. And that one's even worse than these. So thankfully I was able to at least get this light kit and uh you know plate some other odds and ends for the trailer um i got some hardware to mount the ramp so the ramp doesn't have to sit in the back of my car anymore so yeah keep an eye out for that i will be redoing that entire trailer and making it actually work because right now i believe only one brake light works so it was a little sketch bringing it home didn't want to get pulled over but i had just bought it so i think the cops were gonna cut me a break on that one if they did pull me over but yeah keep an eye out that'll probably be the next video i uh post up so until next time i'll see you guys later